Hi, I'm Ted Venema. Let's talk today about noise-induced hearing loss. Noise-induced hearing loss, NIHL, is the second most common cause of hearing loss in the world. The, the most common cause of hearing loss is presbycusis, hearing loss due to aging. Well, there's not a whole lot we can do about that, but there is a lot we can do about noise-induced loss. It is preventable, and the usage of earplugs goes a long ways. Let's face it, in our society today, we've got noise pollution. We, our ears were meant to hear the soft voices spoken over the crackling of a fire. We were never meant to hear the clanging of steel on steel. Such is the Industrial Revolution. If you look at the noise pollution in North America compared to that of Africa or less developed countries, elderly people in North America tend to have poorer hearing than elderly people do in these less, less developed countries. And why? Because there's less noise pollution there. They've got simple presbycusis. In, el in their elderly. We've got presbycusis along with noise damage. Not all of us, but a lot of us do. How loud is loud? Let's talk intensity in decibels. In decibels, ambient room noise is around 40 decibels sound pressure level. Average conversational speech is between 60 and 70 decibels sound pressure level. Yelling is around 80. The, the noise in a loud bar, 90, 95. Je, uh, jet engines, 120 plus. Jackhammers, machinery, at least 110. So these are, when, what, these are noise levels that really can truly cause noise-induced hearing loss. And what's the general rule of thumb here? The general rule of thumb is that around 80 to 85 decibels SPL, you can be exposed to those levels for about eight hours a day. If the rule of thumb is as you go up from there by 5 dB, the time of exposure gets cut in half. So if you can be exposed to 85 dB for eight hours a day, and that's the general cutoff where you begin to suspect or that, that, that someone can get permanent noise-induced hearing loss, you can be exposed to 90 decibels for only four hours. You can be exposed to 95 decibels for only two. You can be exposed to 100 dB for only one. So, you know, the time of exposure gets cut as you go up in decibels, of course. It would make sense. We've all been to concerts. You ever have ringing ears after those concerts? The ringing of the ears is a testament of temporary threshold shift. The hair cells in your cochlea have been affected by the exposure due to noise, and you've got ringing in the ears, tinnitus. The next morning it may be gone. Well, I like to make a, a, like a visual analogy, sort of like the hair cells are blown over by the noise and overnight they got to stand back up again. You can walk over blades of grass and you're going to have the blades will be bent and then they'll stand back up again. But if you keep walking on that same area of the lawn, you're going to wear a path through it. Such is permanent threshold shift, noise-induced hearing loss. Noise-induced loss can be shown on an audiogram much like this. This is a typical audiogram hearing test. Frequency is shown along the top, decibels of intensity along the vertical. 125 is low C on a piano, 250 is middle C on a piano, 500 would be high C, and then octaves going higher as you move to the right. Now, in decibels, 25 decibels or less is considered to be normal hearing. The X's are the left ear, the O's are the right ear. If they reside above the level of 25 decibels, you can say the person's hearing was normal. It never took more than 20, 25 decibels for the person to just barely hear the tone. In the right ear, the O's, the X's, the left ear. But look what noise-induced hearing loss does. It's like a thief in the night came and took a bite out of your hearing right at 4,000 hertz. And why does noise cause a loss like that? Just in the treble frequencies. It's like you're getting the trouble with treble before your time. 
Presbycusis also has treble hearing loss, but this is uninvited hearing loss, has nothing to do with age, it's caused by noise. Why does the loss look like that? Well, it has a lot to do with the resonance of your outer ear canal. This is a picture I'm just laying on top of the audiogram, and it's showing you that the outer ear, the shape of the outer ear, with its particular bumps and ridges, there's reasons for that. The reasons for the weird shape of your outer ear is that it resonates, much like a, a wine glass does at Christmas. And it resonates naturally with high frequency consonants of speech. High frequency consonants of speech. Those are what demarcate what the word is. And those sounds are made louder by nature's gift of the resonance of the outer ear. So you can see that the ear was literally is married to speech. I mean, speech and hearing. At any rate, this gift given by the outer ear to add to the consonants is literally a curse when it comes to noise-induced hearing loss. Sounds being, being amplified right here in this area Noise-induced hearing loss causes hair cell damage a half an octave higher than the noise that came in the ear. So if you shift this little peak of resonance a little bit, a half an octave this way, flip it upside down, what do you got? Noise-induced loss. The bad thing about noise-induced hearing loss is it's quite prevalent among today's young people. People think you can stare. You, we all think, oh, you can't stare at the sun because you're going to lose your vision. Well, you can't do the same with your ears either. You keep you know, blasting them with noise, you're going to kill the hair cells. The good, the, new, the good news here, however, is that noise-induced hearing loss is preventable. Wear earplugs. <laughs>